Well, once again, guys, former President Donald Trump trounces President Joe Biden, this time with a $50 million fundraiser that virtually doubles the amount raised by Biden in his New York fundraiser, the one that he held on the same day as the wake of slain New York cop Jonathan Diller. You guys remember that. As campaign spokesperson Danielle Alvarez said, it took three Democrat presidents to raise $25 million and one president to raise over $50 million, Donald Trump. So Trump's event called the inaugural leadership dinner, they say it sends a signal of a resurgence of Trump and the Republican Party's fundraising. Co-chairs of the fundraiser include Robert Bigelow, a Las Vegas-based businessman who has supported Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' presidential campaign, New York grocery billionaire John Katsimatis, Linda McMahon, the former World Wrestling Entertainment executive and head of the Small Business Administration while Trump was president, casino mogul Steve Wynn, and former Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler. And of course, seeing the success of the event, Biden had to try his best to muddy the waters. That's why the Biden campaign accused Donald Trump of hosting scammers, racists, and extremists at the Palm Beach fundraiser. What he didn't quite mention was the $500,000 top ticket price of the lavish New York City fundraiser the week prior, which raised more than $25 million and featured appearances by former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, plus performances by Lizzo, Queen Latifah, and others. And hey, you may have heard this from mainstream media. Even with the $50 million cast infusion, Trump is still behind Biden when it comes to campaign funds. But let me tell you guys, Biden's campaign funds looking to lap Trump's, but it doesn't guarantee a re-election. You know what I mean? So stay tuned as we unpack the dynamics of this political fundraising event in our video today. All right, so here's the latest right after the inaugural leadership dinner held by Donald Trump, a whopping $50 million raised for the former president and his campaign. So check this out. We started out the week on Monday. I was hearing from my sources within the Trump campaign to expect something around 30 million. And then as the week went on, that number grew and we wrapped up here last night with a press release from the Republican National Committee alongside the Trump campaign claiming that they raised $50.5 million last night. And they're calling this, quote, a historic haul. And there's no doubt $50 million is a lot of money. But the issue is Trump is being spread thin when it comes to his legal battles and his legal fees. And another issue facing the Trump campaign is small dollar donations. Obviously, this was a billionaire dollar, billionaire fundraiser last night. Uh, but small dollar donations, an issue that they're facing. The Biden campaign touting their small dollar donations, though. There was a press release that went out from them claiming that 96% of their donations this last quarter were under $200. Now, we also heard from Trump last night as he headed into that big fundraiser, and he repeated lines that we typically hear on the campaign trail. And people are just wanting change. Rich people want it, poor people want it. Everybody wants change. Our country is really doing poorly. We're a laughing stock all over the world. We're going to get that change very quickly. And this has been some uh, incredible evening before it even starts because people, they wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again. Well, I definitely know a lot of people. They, their husband or wife, their loved ones, they're sending their money directly to his campaign. Now for them, President Trump is not only the US president, but also the world leader to keep peace for everyone. And these people are the same people who voted for him twice and will probably do it the third time to keep America safe again. You know what I mean? And well, it looks like the billionaire class is realizing that as well and are now coming back to the fold. You can see that in a $50.5 million Trump's campaign raise in one night. The reported haul from the event with major donors at the Palm Beach, Florida home of billionaire investor John Paulson sets a new single event fundraising record and has almost doubled the $26 million that Biden's campaign raised or said it raised recently at a gathering with former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Barack Obama at the Radio City Music Hall in New York. So according to Donald Trump's campaign advisors, it's clearer than ever that we have the message, the operation, and the money to propel President Trump to victory on November 5th. What do you guys think? Now, as you've heard Trump say himself at the event, this was some incredible evening before it even started because of the people. They wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again, and that's what happened. When Trump first launched his campaign, it wasn't exactly a scramble among the big donors to back him. Quite a few were eyeing other Republican candidates who challenged him as the presidential primary. 
But Trump's series of smooth victories and how he quickly became the presumptive nominee for the party changed the game. Before he knew it, the GOP was rallying around him. Now, if you haven't already, guys, before we get any further into the video, all I ask is that you take one second, drop a quick like for the video, and also consider subscribing to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos and updates like this one. All right, so over the weekend, Donald Trump had his high dollar event that pulled in 100 guests, including more than a few billionaires. The cash from the shindig is earmarked for the Trump 47 committee. Contributions to the event will go toward the Trump 47 committee, according to the invitation, a joint fundraising agreement with the Republican National Committee, state Republican parties, and Save America, a political action committee that pays the bulk of Trump's legal bills. Now, what's interesting here is how the donations are managed. The fundraising agreement directs donations to first pay the maximum allowed under law to his campaign and save America before the RNC or state parties get a cut. Guests are asked to contribute $814,600 per person as a chairman contributor, which came with a seating at Trump's table or $250,000 per person as a host committee contributor. Both options came with a photo opportunity and a personalized copy of Trump's coffee table book featuring photographs from his administration, Our Journey together. For many of these rich millionaires and billionaires, their war cry was time to protect our beautiful America, Trump 2024. And it looks like it worked. I mean, $50 million, you guys? I can't even imagine that kind of money. What about you? Biden really did his best to taint the win from Donald Trump's historic fundraiser. He said it was just a bunch of hedge fund billionaires who were gathering in Florida to support him. He said that the campaign is Scranton versus Palm Beach. And Trump is down in Florida raising money from a bunch of hedge fund billionaires who want him to cut Social Security, Medicare, and their taxes. Biden then touted his campaign's March fundraising report, which tallied a $90 million intake for the month, boosted, he said, by an influx of small dollar donations under $200. He said that their campaign now has 1.6 million individual donors and more than half a million of those donors are brand new since 2020. Biden's new small dollar totals, if continued, would represent a sharp turnaround from the two candidates. Trump and his GOP committees took in a record $626.6 million from grassroots givers in 2020, far outpacing Biden in this category. And hey, it's still early in the game, so I wouldn't count out Trump in this category either, you know what I mean? And of course, Biden failed to mention the $500,000 top ticket price at his lavish New York City fundraising event the week prior, which raised more than $25 million and featured appearances by former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, plus performances by Lizzo, Queen Latifah, and others. But for many Trump supporters, they've had enough of Biden. They're chanting FJB, F Obama, F Harris, F Clinton, F Schumer, F that. Basically, they're expressing their discontent with the administration and they want to turn things around. So Biden Biden's campaign also piled on their smear job against Donald Trump's Palm Beach fundraiser, accusing this Republican rival of courting unsavory groups for his upcoming fundraising dinner. Being held at the home of billionaire John Paulson and co-chaired by business mogul Robert Bigelow, former World Wrestling Entertainment executive Linda McMahon, real estate developer Steve Wynn, Red Apple Group chairman John Castamatis, and former Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler. But Biden campaign senior spokesperson Serafina Shakir made an incendiary remark about this event, accusing Donald Trump of inviting racists and extremists to dinner. She said, if you want to know who Donald Trump will fight for in a second term, just look at who he's having over for dinner Saturday night. Tax cheats, scammers, racists, and extremists. She then threatened that Donald Trump will do the bidding of his billionaire buddies instead of what's best for the American people, and that he'll take their checks and cut their taxes and leave hardworking Americans behind, shipping their jobs overseas, cutting Social Security, Medicare, ripping away health care protections, and banning abortion. Well, that was definitely a lot. What do you guys think? Now, of course, it wouldn't be a U.S. election without some dirt being thrown around, would it? Now, what about where the campaign funds are currently at? Trump and the GOP announced that they raised more than $65.5 million in March, and they closed out the month with $93.1 million. Biden and the Democrats announced Saturday that they took in more than $90 million last month, and they had $192 million plus on hand. Needless to say, President Joe Biden's re-election campaign is raising gobs of cash, and it has an election year strategy 
strategy that, in a nutshell, aims to spend more and spend faster. Biden's really been flexing his fundraising muscles, not just showcasing his strength in ranking in donations, but also putting serious money into building a solid campaign presence, both through on the ground and on the airwaves. He's aiming for such a big head start that he hopes to have Trump playing a frantic game of catch up. But even with a hefty war chest giving Biden and his Democratic allies a clear financial edge, it's becoming evident that he's really going to need that money. In fact, Donald Trump's knack for stirring up controversy has always gotten him heaps of media attention for free, something that he's leveraged throughout both his business ventures and political career. Meanwhile, Biden, despite being the president, sometimes find it tough to get his message heard amidst all of the commotion. So yeah, Biden's going to need a boatload of cash in order to make sure he's heard in the key battleground states where a few thousand votes could mean the difference between victory or defeat. And then of course, there's the hurdle of connecting with millennials and even the younger crowd who played a big role in his 2020 win. Reaching them is trickier now with a far more complex media landscape that's leaning more towards streaming and less on traditional TV and cable. And remember, a massive ground game disadvantage didn't prevent Trump from winning a presidency in 2016, a fact Democrats keenly remember. As Robbie Mook, campaign manager for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential bid, pointed out, Trump is Trump's best organizer and Trump can motivate people from the podium. Biden's campaign is gearing up to be a little bit more costly this time around. You see, back in 2020, when pretty much everyone was sticking close to home because of the pandemic, Biden managed to run his campaign mostly online, straight from his basement. But now, with things opening back up, he's going to have to hit the road and build up a whole political machine, which is definitely going to cost a boatload of cash. Plus, he's got some extra bills to pay that Trump doesn't have to pay, like covering the tab for using Air Force One for his campaign trips. In fact, they've already shelled out a sizable four and a half million dollars for it. So sure, Trump's team admits that Biden and his crew might have a bigger wallet for his campaign campaign, but they're confident Trump can still make a huge splash, especially with all the media attention that he gets for free. They're boasting about his online fundraising is through the roof and their big donors are stepping up their game. Steve Chung, the Trump's campaign communications guy, is all about hyping up the fundraising skills and their plan to not just rake in the cash, but also use it wisely to get Trump back in the Oval Office and help the Republicans cross the board. So like I keep saying, this is all going to come down to the wire, you guys, and Trump's inaugural leadership dinner kind of marks a significant milestone, signaling strong support from Trump from various influential figures and the potential for a highly competitive race. So whether you're on Team Trump or you're rooting for Biden, there's no denying strategic moves and the counter moves that are at play here. Now, if you found our video helpful today, definitely show some love, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.